Good evening, church. Trust you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Good to see you all. If you're in the house, would you stand with us as we turn our minds and our hearts and lift our voices to our Heavenly Father?
life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God come on all my life All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Oh, I'm going to see of the goodness of God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Sam and Van, for leading us to the throne of God and just reminding of us of the goodness of God and how God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, praise God. And, um, and so we just want to, uh, if you're watching with us online, let us know who's watching. If you're a first-time guest, if you would just text guest to this number, 478 Two four two seventy two hundred. We just name an email address. We'd just like to send you a little note of thanks for watching. Uh, also, if you're online, you have a prayer request. If you want to put it in the comment section, put it in the comment section, or you can text pray uh, to that number four seven eight two four two seventy two hundred, and you'll get a uh, just a a form where you can just put your prayer request out. It'll go straight to Kristen. And she'll shoot it to me, and we'll be praying for you. So we just want to uh, encourage you to be praying. And like I said, if you do have a request and want to see the group, let them see it. Go ahead and put it in the comment section. So let's uh, do praise the Lord for a good Sunday, first service in here, and praise the Lord for how uh, it uh, went. And go ahead. She'll, she'll give you an update right there. She lives right down the road from me. So, uh, uh, but do pray for Sheila Stinson. She's not doing well um, in the hospital with pneumonia, so just pray. But, uh, uh, but again, um, do praise the Lord for Sunday and his goodness and how things worked out. Do thank the Lord for the guests that came. And so, um, and so we're in here for a little while. Uh, for how long, you ask God, I don't know. <laughs> this is uh, the Corona apocalypse, and God is in control. So, uh, so, but let's do pray for our country. Um, we have some crazy days ahead of us uh, with a lot of stuff with uh, the virus and a lot of stuff going on in our country and a huge election. And um, so just let's just really pray. Do praise the Lord. There was only over 50,000 uh, in D.C. on Saturday with Franklin Graham on the day of prayer. And there was 50,000 there between Washington Monument and Lincoln Memorial, and they were praying. And so let's really pray every day. Okay? Just pray every day uh, for God to move and work. Uh, in our nation, move and work, and all those people that live in Washington, D.C., and uh, serve in our government, uh, pray for everybody to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's, that's the only hope, okay? And so that's really what we need to pray for, and we need to pray for many of our cities. Man, they need the gospel desperately, okay? Not a woke so social justice gospel, <laughs> but a life-changing, life-altering, radical gospel. And uh, so pray uh, that in the days ahead we might see God move, we might see more 
preachers preach the gospel, not a gospel, not a easy gospel, but the gospel. And so let's pray uh, for the days ahead. So let's go, Lord, in prayer and uh, pray and ask God to speak to us tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we do come to you. Lord, we do ask that, again, you would just move and work tonight as we meet in your house. And, Lord, may you speak to us through your word. And may you encourage people with us and those online, Lord, whether they're watching live or later on. Lord, I don't know what's going on in their lives, but you do. And, Lord, I pray that you would meet them at their deepest point of need, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that need a healing touch like uh, Sheila Stinson and others in our body and others in our families. Lord, may you just touch them. Lord, we pray for those that have this virus. Lord, you would heal them up. Lord, we do pray for a stop to this virus again. And you're Jehovah uh, Rapha. You're the God who heals. And Lord, we pray for healing and a, just a stop, Lord, whether it's through vaccine or you just take care of it, whatever, Lord. We just pray for a stop and especially no, no more loss of life. Lord, we do pray for all those on the front line, our medical uh, people, Lord, we just pray that you would watch over them and protect them and be with them. And Lord, we again do pray for our president and vice president and all those that serve in Washington from congressmen and women and senators and our Supreme Court justices. Lord, may you again speak into their hearts. Lord, we pray those that are in the military and those that make decisions in Washington through many ways. Lord, we pray you might move and work there lord we pray for many of our metropolitan cities that are in turmoil lord lord we pray that the gospel might spread faster than this virus and that many might be saved in the days ahead lord we plead and ask for you to work lord we utterly acknowledge that you're our only hope because apart from you we can do absolutely nothing and so lord we ask that you would just speak and guide tonight Ask for your strength, and may you speak through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. It's amazing how many times if you and I get a headache or toothache or, or a pain, it can really change your attitude. It can really change your behavior uh, because what happens is really our bodies work best when all parts are functioning at the best, right? But when you got a headache, it kind of affects everything else. It affects your attitude and everything else. Same for the church. The church works best when everybody is functioning and using their spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. The body of Christ becomes healthy. And we've been looking at spiritual gifts and how God has given every Christ follower at least one spiritual gift. And God expects us to recognize that we have gifts or one gift. He expects us to find out what they are, develop them, and then use them. And so that's why we're going through this um, series. Tonight we want to look exploring ministry gifts. But let me just recap very quickly the definition that we've kind of been looking at for spiritual gifts. It's this. Spiritual gifts are special abilities given to every Christ follower by the Holy Spirit to do spiritual ministries for the edification of the church, which could can mean in the building and outside the building, okay? Because you are the church, and you take Christ with you, and many times we do ministry outside the walls of the building, and so you can take your gifts out there and use them. Now, the last well, several weeks we've been looking at motivational spiritual gifts and how those are the kind of the inward drive within us that express uh, Christ's love, and they're really the lens that we see things through, okay? And I really do believe every person has a motivational gift, and it's really your lens of what, how you see things and what motivates you. Now, tonight we're going to look at ministry gifts. Next week we're going to look at uh, manifestation gifts, okay? And we're going to look at those uh, in... People vary on that. Uh, you may have not heard it spoken the way I, I believe, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that next week um, and look at manifestation gifts. But understand, hey, we get them at the moment of salvation. Tonight we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 
through 15. He says, and he himself, and in this context is talking about Christ, gave some to be apostles, gave some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers doing what? Equipping the saints for the work of the ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and techniques of deceit. That verse 14 is a lot of what's being shucked today <laughs> all around our country. Verse 15, but speaking tr the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. We all work together. And so kind of what we want to talk about again is ministry gifts. And so here's kind of the take home on this, uh, on your outline. God gifts people with ministry gifts to build up the church. God gifts people with ministry gifts to build up the church. Whether you're watching online, here with me, you're a Christ follower, God gifts us all but he also gives people with ministry gifts for one main reason, to build up the church. And so tonight we're going to look at ministry gifts, and we're going to look at three sections on this. And so let's kind of dive in. Number one, the different types of ministry gifts. Okay, There's different types of ministry gifts that he mentions here, and there's four different types of that he mentions in verse 11, which I really believe are ministry gifts. Are these different than motivational gifts? Yes. Okay? These are ministry gifts. Okay? And it's, just go back to the verse, verse 11. And he himself, Christ, gave some to be apostles. Okay? So first, we want first ministry gift is apostles. Okay? Now, what does that word mean? It means, means one sent with a divine mission or task you have a divine mission or task now we know that there were apostles in the bible how many were there 12 and they were eyewitnesses of the resurrection of jesus they were personally commissioned by christ to proclaim the gospel and establish the church they were appointed by jesus do you think you have apostles today? N no, I don't. I'm going to tell you, apostles were eyewitnesses of Jesus, and they were set aside. You say, hey, I've seen apostle so-and-so of this church. He can put that name by him, but I don't think that title is, was only given to those 12. You say, what about Judas? Who would have been the 12? I think the apostle Paul would have been. I'm gonna get it. Uh, I'm gonna get to you. I'm gonna get to you here just right now, because how did how did Paul refer to himself a couple times? Apostle of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, do people have this gift today? Okay. Now let's go back to the definition. Means one sent with a divine mission or task. Now, what would that be today? That would be missionaries and church planners. They're called out, but they wouldn't be called apostles. I think there's only 12 apostles, but this word means sent out with a divine mission or task. How this gift is used is through being missionaries and church planners. Now, what did the apostles do? Peter, James, and John. They were the leaders of the New Testament church, and they went out and did what? Planted churches, advanced the gospel. But do we have any eyewitness accounts of the resurrection today? No. None of you were living that long ago. Yes. 
And I think God gifts people and he calls them to be missionaries and church planners, but they don't have the title apostle. Because I think that ended in the New Testament with the 12 apostles. And all of them were pretty much <laughs> crucified, stabbed, killed, or John. John was putting a, 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 a big thing of boiling oil and somehow survived. And then he was what? He was taken to the Isle of Patmos and left there. And so today I believe how this ministry gift is used is with missionaries and church planners, and we have them all over the world, right? We have missionaries that come to America, we have church planners in America, and we have people leave, leave from here and go to India and Australia and the bush and everywhere else in the world to do what? They have a divine mission and a task to take the gospel, plant churches, and advance the kingdom of God. That's a ministry gift. I really do believe God calls missionaries and church planners to go out. He does. Second, second gift is prophets. Men that God gives to proclaim the revelation of God's word. Now, Ephesians 2.20 tells us that the church was built on the apostles and the prophets. Okay. Now, do we have any prophets, kind of like in the Old Testament, some in the very beginning of the New Testament, they would have foretelled the future? No. Now, you got some idiots on TV that might tell you that. But they're not prophets. Okay? How would this gift be used today? It'd be a preacher, someone that is preaching the revelation of God's Word and proclaiming the truth of God's word, okay? Because they're going to go out there and edify and encourage and challenge and console people with what? The word of God. And so I really think you got missionaries, church planners, preachers. The next one is evangelists. These are men who are gifted in preaching and sharing the gospel. The word means to proclaim good news. The gospel is good news. Now, I, I really believe this is a ministry gift and that there is the office of an evangelist. I've got evangelist friends. I've had evangelists here preach. I do not believe this, and, and you're gonna if you do some study on spiritual gifts, you will have even some of the spiritual gifts tests you take, one of the gifts they will say is evangelism. There is no such thing as a spiritual gift of evangelism. There's an office, a ministry gift of evangelists that God gifts to preach the gospel and share, teach people how to share the gospel, but there is not a spiritual gift of evangelism. You know why? God's told us all to share the gospel. It's all of our jobs to go share the gospel. Now, an evangelist would be someone like, you got Philip in the New Testament, what did he do? All of a sudden, he meets this Ethiopian eunuch on the road. He's like, what you reading? He says, Isaiah, do you understand what you're reading? No. He shares the gospel with him from the Old Testament. He leads him to the Lord right on the spot and baptizes him. See, evangelists have the gift. God has gifted them to preach the gospel, share the gospel, and see men, women, and boys and girls come to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Say, so give me some examples of evangelists. Well, number one would be Billy Graham. Number two, you may have not heard this. Uh, you may have, but you more than likely haven't heard this guy's name, but he's preached all over the world, Junior Hill. Old country boy from Hartsville, Alabama. Has preached everywhere in the world. We had him when I was in Memphis a couple times. Junior would come. I promise you I would baptize 50 or more in the next month. Junior would come in preach a simple message and you're like wow was that simple give an invitation and the people will just flock giving their lives to christ see that's a ministry gift i preach the same message and everybody looks at me like <laughs> 
but it's also a giftedness of, from God. God's gifted evangelists to go all over the world and to go into churches and preach the gospel, and God has gifted them. That's why you want to invite evangelists, because God has gifted them, and you want them, people to invite lost people, because you never know. you got a guy that's gifted by God. Man, they hear the gospel, there's a good chance they're going to get saved. See, God gives people like that. Why? To build up the church. Praise God. And we need evangelists. Unfortunately, most of them are going out of business, folks. They'd already much, pretty much gone out of business almost before COVID. COVID's almost put them all out of business. Because most churches don't use them anymore. Most churches don't see that they they have a gift from God to help help the church. And I'm just telling you like it is, a lot of churches don't even much care about preaching the gospel, so why would you call an evangelist in to preach the gospel? Next ministry gift is pastors, teachers. These are men who lead, feed, provide, and protect the body of Christ. The word for pastor here is the image of a shepherd with his flock. And he has a relationship with him as a spiritual leader. He cares for the church, uh, provides for the church, leads, feeds, and protects the church. Now, why do you say pastor, teacher? Now, just look at the verse, verse here. It says he gave some, look at how he used the word there, some to be what, apostles? Some to be apostle. I mean, uh, apostles and prophets, and evangelists, some evangelists, and then he says some pastors, but he doesn't say some teachers, did he? He joins them together with an and. And so most would say that's one office, but that's two functions that person would have. They would lead and feed and be responsible for the flock. They would nourish the, the, the flock with the word of God. Now, the word teacher there means to be a master instructor, a master teacher. Again, I've told you many times before, uh, I really believe my job is to lead, feed, intercede, and disciple. Those are my four main jobs. Lead, feed, intercede, and disciple. You say, what if everybody else thinks you ought to do 88 other different things? Um... Number one, I'm not Superman, and I don't have an S under my shirt. And number two, I'm responsible to God and accountable to Him. Because I will be accountable for how I lead, feed. <laughs> lead, feed, provide, protect. Part of that protect, the reason I preached all I did this summer <laughs> is to protect you and let you know the wolves out there that are in sheep's clothing. That's part of my job. There are wolves out there that want to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. And that's part of a pastor's job. Now, I sometimes think pastors, we forget that. You know why? It's not. Some people are, would not think that's a popular thing to preach on, and they might get some pushback in the church. But I'm blessed to preach at a great church, and I... Uh, I didn't get any pushback. All of y'all wanted to know what's going on out there. But there's some people at some churches, they'd give you pushback because they would say, hey, we don't need to know about that. Yeah, you, de- you do need to know what's going on out there so you can pray. So those are the four ministry gifts. You've got uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And again, I really think those are fleshed out Um Missionary, church planner, preacher, evangelist, uh, pastor, teacher, okay? You say, what about people that would have other gifts in other ministries? Well, I think God gives them too. Just like I believe God called Brother Sam. He gifted him uh, uh, in music. Just like God gifts people to be student ministers and children's ministers. I think God gifts them and calls them. And I think he gives them those gifts, but I think part of their job also is those that are under their ministry, they would kind of fall under that pastor-teacher. 
because we're looking for a student pastor, what I want him to do. I want him to lead, feed, provide, and protect the students. Same for children. Lead, feed, protect, provide, and protect for kids. Does that make sense? So just because it didn't say music ministry, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have that back then, you know? But you know what I'm saying? I think those people are called to, to ministry. God gifts them to for ministry. But I think they would fall under that role. Those that God puts under their ministry, whether they have four or 400, it don't matter. They're to lead, feed, provide, protect, and I really even think disciple. Those that God puts under their ministry. Okay? Number two. Those with ministry gifts are to disciple and train members. Okay? Those with ministry gifts are to disciple and train members. So pastor teachers are to do what? Verse 13, 12. Equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. Now this word here, equip, means to mend, to make whole, to repair, to, uh, to be made complete. It is the same word. That is used in Matthew 4.21 to describe James and John when they repaired and prepared their nets for fishing. See, they would clean their nets to get the, the seaweed and the sticks out. They would mend and repair them where they had been torn and damaged. And all of this was preparation. So they'd do what? Catch more fish. The nests were not being prepared for storage. They were being prepared for what? Service. Also, this same word was a medical term, which would talk about setting a bone or resetting a dislocated bone. Or, or you know, like the doctor will see a, a broken bone, and he will set it so it will heal. So what are people to do with ministry gifts? We're to equip the saints. Does that, does that mean that doesn't include y'all since y'all are not from New Orleans? No. Who are saints? Christ follows. You're right. Okay. So those with ministry gifts are to equip who? You. Christ followers. The church. To do what? To do what? Right, the work of ministry, okay? Jesus mended holes and ministry nets. He worked with his disciples. He poured into them for how many years? Three. And what did he do toward the end? He let them do it. Sent them out. Sent them out what? Two by two. And so the purpose of the church is to equip and train saints, See, that's what God's called me here to do. Disciple and train you. Does that mean you do all the ministry and I don't do it? No, we do it together. But see, the problem is, many in America have bought into what's called the holy man myth that, hey, we call the pastor, he'll do all the ministry, the church will grow, we sit down, do nothing, eat gospel burgers, and just enjoy our day. It's not what this text says. Maybe that's in your amplified amplified version but it says here we're to equip you to disciple you to work with you so we can make disciples and make disciples to train others to do the work of the ministry and there's one thing we're going to have to really work on uh in in these post-covid days is we're really going to have to work on that is pouring into others and getting others up to speed because I'm just going to tell you like it is right now. Since y'all are, you're, you're the committed core here right now. You need to understand a lot of people, uh, we call them up to ask to help. And you're going to hear zip. They don't want to help right now. But you also got to understand in this new day, they're stating before COVID, the average churchgoer went 1.6 times a month. You know how much they say they're going to go now post-COVID? 
Now, I don't know if that means they're going to be on the other three Sundays online with us. I don't know. Hope they are. But they're saying most people are only going to go to church one time a month. Now, that's shrinking your servant pool up in a hurry. When the Bible says you're to be part of the body, God has gifted you. You're to be equipped, trained, and disciple so that you can do ministry, so that you can help others do ministry. See, that's why God puts people with ministry gifts in churches to help disciple and train others so then they can go out and serve others and then train others so that they can do the same. So let's move to the third section. Because he gives us gifts, he gives us to them to build others up, disciple and train. But number three, the church grows and is built up when members serve by using their spiritual gifts. The church grows and is built up when members serve by using their spiritual gifts. Again, go back to verse 12. You're equipped to do what? The work of the ministry. Now, what is ministry? Serving God by serving others. That simple definition and a whole bunch can fall underneath it, right? Handing out a cup of cold water to somebody on a 95-degree day that's thirsty, that's, that's ministry. So there's all kinds of ways to do ministry. And we're all to be part of the ministry. Okay, again, I think pastors are, would be what, here's my athletic illustration, or not, they would be player coaches. They're in the game, but they're leading at the same time. I think that's the way it is for every person with a ministry gift serving in a church. Yes, they may be leading, but they're serving at the same time. Howard Hendricks said this. He said, the church is much like a football game. This was before COVID. 50,000 people in the stands, desperately in need of exercise, watching 22 people on a field in desperate need of rest. And unfortunately, that's the way a lot of our churches have, have been for years. 80% of the people sitting in the stands and 20% out on the field needing a break. So, again, it goes back. You can't make them serve, but there's many, I believe, if you invite to serve, they will serve. Or if you show them how to serve, or if you disciple them and pour into them, and they see what the Word says, they will be on board and be part of a church that wants to serve. And so, Christ gave us the, these gifts to use them, to build up the body. Now, in verse 13, we see the goal of using our gifts. The goal of using our gifts. He says in verse 13 here, he says, Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son growing into maturity. And so, number one there, I think one of the goals is that we grow in unity. As we work together, as we serve together, and man, we, we grow to know Christ, we, we grow to encourage one another. Man, there's nothing like serving together. With your brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what the it doesn't matter what the task is. There's just something about serving and, and being there with one another. It doesn't matter what the ministry is. It's just something about camaraderie and teamwork and fellowship and 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 how do you, a lot of times you get to know people serving. And you're like, Well, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that about you. I didn't even know. Wow, that's a great test. I didn't know anything about it. That's awesome. And so it's about the body, again, seeing the need. Hey, we need to all serve with one another, and we'll grow in unity. But that unity comes from being devoted to Christ and devoted to the church. And we will grow in unity. 
Second goal, I believe, in using our gifts is that we will grow in maturity. We'll grow in maturity because as you grow to be more Christ-like, you're in the Word, you see the need to do ministry, you're open to what the Spirit says, and you get involved. Now, what's the opposite of spiritual maturity? Immaturity or spiritual malnutrition. See, back to 14, the reason we need to grow, the reason we need to serve and, and, and be discipled and trained is so that, hey, we all know uh, when there's some uh, false teachers out there so we don't get tossed to and fro from all the things in the world. And so we need to use our gifts but a lot of times how we come to know how to use our gifts and being open to use our gifts is by growing in the Word. Again, that's why I, I challenge all of us to read in the Word every day, engage with the Word every day. Eugene Peterson said this. He said, The greatest challenge for every pastor is to actually get his people to read the Word for themselves. They can proof text the Bible. They can reference the Bible. They have read books about the Bible but they have never actually read the Bible for themselves many times. That's why Paul, one of my favorite verses, Colossians 1, 28 and 29, the last part, he, he says, man, in the last part, verse 28, he says, man, I want to present everyone mature in Christ. He says, that's my goal. This is what I throng. I use everything for it. This is what I labor for. Man, this is what pushes me every morning. Hey, I want to see everyone mature in Christ from students to the oldest adult. Now, will everybody buy into that? No. But my job's not to force you. My job is just to try to throw enough salt in them oats and waters to where you want to go, go get in it every day and engage with the Word. See, what's amazing is, though, and I really do think this happens, if you'll be open to being using your gift or gifts, that as you use them, maturity happens through ministry. I really do believe that because as you start using your gifts, what does that mean you have to do? You have to be dependent upon Him and dependent upon the Spirit because you're like, well, I never used this, but Lord, I know you've gifted me or you've given me a desire for this or you give me a passion for this or Lord, you've opened the door so I can help in this ministry. And I really believe how a lot of people grow is one of the ways is just getting out and doing ministry. Because I believe ministry happens through, maturity happens through ministry. You will grow. Now, what's verse 15 and 16? Let's look at the result of using our gifts. If we use them, kind of ties in what I just said. What's the result of using our gifts? Number one, every Christ follower is growing spiritually. He says in verse 15, grow in every way intent into him who is the head Christ. I think God wants us to grow spiritually, but we also need our brothers and sisters to encourage us through this. And sometimes we even need brothers and sisters, as verse 15, to say what? Speak truth and love to us. And say, hey, I see this in your life. Hey, you can do this. Hang in there. But ultimately, we got to want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every day. And if you're going to use your gift to to the max and to the full you got to grow spiritually say why i've got the gift i can use it well if you're not growing spiritually eventually uh you will burn out because you'll be using it in your flesh and you won't grow and because you're not growing and burning out your life will just just drop out that's why you got to grow spiritually and then second, I believe every Christ follower is gifted for service. Because in verse 16, it says, The whole body fitted and knitted together by every supporting ligament does what promotes growth of the body for the building of itself in love. If we all grow and we realize, hey, God has gifted me here. I'm not good there, but man, God, God, i got a heart. I can do this. And you get in, it's going to make the body healthy it's going to encourage the body. 
And again, the motto is pretty simple. Every member is a minister. You're a minister. You're like, hey, I don't have a ministry gift. I've never been called to do full-time ministry. It doesn't matter. You have a ministry. You're a minister. You've given your life to Christ. He's gifted you. And as you serve, that's ministry. So everybody that is a member, that is a Christ follower, you're a minister. And when that happens, when you and I do that, we build up the body, and then it becomes healthy. The reason a lot of our churches are not doing a whole lot is because they're not healthy. And they're not healthy because people are not growing and people are not using their gifts. And so he's saying, man, use your gifts. You'll build other people up. And again, you will grow. Again, some of the sweetest times in ministries, I've gone and served here, done this or that, and thought, well, you know, I'm going to go over there and help those people out and do this, and, you know, we're tr- just really going to try to help them out. And then when you come home, you feel like you cheated them because you got blessed more than they did. So you've been gifted for service. God will bless you if you will serve and use your gifts to build up the body. See, God gifts people i believe with ministry gifts to build up the church but he also gifts you and i and every christ follower to build up the church let me read this one quote and we'll wrap up pastor ray stebman said this he says we easily forget that the church is a body he says we've tried to operate the church as an institution a corporation a business but he says but the reality paul wants us to grasp here in Ephesus and to this church is that it is a body made up of cells. Cells are individual believers, you and me, and our brothers and sisters in Christ. And each cell has a unique role to play in keeping the entire body healthy. Each cell has a unique role to play in keeping the entire body healthy. Just like you have ministry gifts that God gives to put in churches. Yes, you need those people using their gifts in a healthy way. And sometimes those people with the ministry gifts are not using them in a healthy way. And if they don't use them in a healthy way, the church is not going to be healthy. But if we understand, hey, God gives some to be ministry leaders. He gives others, everybody else in the body. He gifts us and we have a unique role. And when everybody more figures that out, our churches will be a whole lot more healthy. And when churches are healthy, they will reach people. That's why we need to know our spiritual gifts. That's why we need to know that, hey, there are people out there that God does gift for ministry. But then there's every Christ follower that he has gifted for service and so don't forget that don't sell yourself short you are gifted god has gifted you he saved you put his holy spirit in you at the moment of salvation he actually gave you your gift mix i really believe at the moment of salvation too it just takes a little while to discover what that is That's why we need to discover and then develop and then deploy them to build up the body. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you do gift us as Christ followers to build up your church, to advance the kingdom, to encourage one another. And Lord, I do pray for my brothers and sisters with me here in person. I pray for my brothers and sisters online and lord i pray for those that don't know what their gifts are yet or maybe they're struggling they're praying about it lord i pray that you'd make it clear to them and lord as we look at discovering those even more in a couple weeks lord i pray that you would just reveal that to to many and lord we again just thank you that we can be part of the body of christ lord i'm grateful that we're part of the family of god lord that we're part of your fold And Lord, I'm just grateful that we're your sheep. And as we 
looked at last Sunday, Lord, help us to walk closely to you. Lord, may you lead us. And Lord, may we clearly hear your voice every day. And may you lead us to do ministry and missions and touch lives like never before in the days ahead, even in the, mid, in the middle of this corona apocalypse. Lord, use us for your kingdom. Use us to build up your church and grow us through it, Lord, so that we might be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a great week. Uh, look forward to seeing you Sunday, 10 a.m. in here, uh, in person. We do have room, more room. Or if you still want to be online, start a watch party, invite others. Y'all have a great week, and see you Sunday.